Hello, this is our next instalment of HEPCO Live. A very warm welcome to everybody joining us today. We have four exciting subjects to share with you. My name is David Weston and I'm the International Sales Manager for Asia. For those of you who have been on these events before, this guy may not require an introduction. Yes, um, thank you very much, David. Um, yes, for those of you that have joined us on, on past webinars, you'll no doubt recognize myself. I, I'm Alec Dick. I'm International Sales Manager for North America and Europe. Uh, so thank you once again uh, for joining us. Thank you for your time today. Uh, as always, this is going to be a live and interactive event. So we want your participation um, so what we're going to do is basically show you sort of four presentations of very interesting subjects, mm -hmm. and we're going to open up to your questions. Uh, so be sure that uh, you get your questions in the sort of bottom middle of your screen. There should be a, a Q&A button. Um, put, put your question in any time in between each segment. David and I will do our very best to answer your questions. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of do two or three questions and, and then move on. But don't worry, if we don't get to your question at the end, we're going to basically open up for a free for all uh, and we can go as, as long as you're there. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, David, what are we going to be looking at? Well, to kick off with, we'll be looking at the new technologies that have driven the revolution in warehousing. We'll follow that with modern process lines and why exactly DTS is such a good fit. Yeah. Uh, and then next up. You know, you may associate HEPCO with sort of lighter applications, but we also have a lot of solutions for heavier applications. So we're going to take a look at that. And then finally, David's got a really interesting segment on, uh, you know, what is clearly the future uh, automation within the EV manufacturing industry. Yeah, quite so. Um, so shall we kick it off? Let's kick off. Without further ado, here's Alec and here's Warehousing. So let me kick this off by asking you a question. Have you had a package or parcel delivered in the last week or so? And really the chances are that probably, yes, most of you have. And really this is the end result of what we're going to look at next, logistics. Sounds simple, doesn't it? The process of an order being placed and ultimately arriving at the customer's premises, often within days or sometimes even the same day of order. Indeed, the demands of the consumer or end user have pushed deliveries ever shorter. And that has really placed demands on the logistics industry to innovate with the processes involved in the simple act of moving the goods from A to B. And it's when you start to consider these processes that you can understand why HEPCO has been a key part of helping our logistics customers meet the ever increasing demands of their business. When you think about the warehousing and distribution hubs, every single product has to come in, be stored in a traceable manner and then picked sent out, all without any mistakes, of course. And in the past, there has typically been a lot of manual handling involved with these processes. This is, of course, very labor intensive, time consuming, and invariably involved warehouses that needed to be far larger due to safe working height limits for the operators. The warehousing revolution has really accelerated rapidly over the past few years, and we're now seeing automation as a key part of the logistics chain. And this has seen a huge increase in efficiency in terms of the speed and accuracy of product handling, but it's also allowed the precious labor to be deployed in a more productive manner. Automated handling systems and robots also don't have height restrictions. So this has allowed verticality within warehouses, allowing storage to go up rather than out, which ultimately increases storage within a smaller footprint. And of course, motion is very much what HEPCO is about. We provide the mechanical means to move a product from point A to point B. But the challenges we see in these automated warehouses isn't just limited to the logistics industry. It can be applied to virtually any process where product handling applies. And when you think about it, the action of moving a product between two or more points is generally lost time. So you need to optimize this movement when we take a look at warehousing applications we have been involved in, there are generally two main means of product handling. There's gantry robots and autonomous mobile robots. Sometimes both of these systems working together. 
Gantry robots are fixed installations and will generally span the storage system, often comprising of three axes. They need to be able to cover large distances at high speeds. And remember that the time physically moving the product is basically lost time. For these types of applications, we have supplied gantries based around our proven V-Guide systems. A linear solution that is particularly adept at high speeds and long distances. We've had examples using our DLS, SPD and HDLS belt driven systems. And this method of drive being particularly suitable for high speeds. Our diverse range allows us to move anything from a few kilograms up to hundreds of kilograms. And when coupled with a servo motor drive system, accuracy and repeatability can be within fractions of a millimeter. HEPCO driven systems are of a modular design and with the help of our technical team can be configured to full mechanical three axis systems. And the important point here is that you're not on your own when trying to design a solution for your application. We just need to understand the important details such as the size and weight of the payload, where it's positioned, what time you have to cover a cycle, how long it will be working every day, and of course, the working environment. So in autonomous mobile robots were a more flexible solution capable of AI driven picking and generally more adaptable to work in either specialized or the more traditional warehouse with racks and shelving units. The design of these robots is often challenging. Packaging of the mechanical and electrical systems contained have to be in highly optimized to keep it in the space and keep the overall size and mass down. Some robots actually climb shelving units, so it's important that you aren't lugging around excess weight. However, it still needs to be highly durable to endure the demands of a very industrialized process. So packaging, weight, and low maintenance are the key drivers for autonomous mobile robots. And HEPCO has supplied both linear and rotary solutions that have been used in such platforms. Our linear systems are available in small footprint options and even include aluminium guides for lightweight, low load applications. Another instance has seen one of our heavy duty rings used within a robot platform. The rotary motion allowing the orientation of shelves that are moved and stored by robots. The ring design was particularly beneficial as the open center of the ring allows for the packaging to be highly optimized with access through the ring to the crucial drive element. In addition, the integral gear drive makes for a simple solution to provide drive to the robot turntable with the heavy duty V bearings capable of fully supporting the mass of a loaded shelving unit. Very low lubrication requirements of all our V-System solutions mean that less time is spent on maintenance and more time for the robot to be productive. The logistics industry has really embraced automation and it continues to innovate with advancing artificial intelligence, controlling entire warehouses and in some instances with it being completely autonomous. And it's imperative that the mechanical elements that are responsible for the physical handling are as robust and low maintenance as possible. And really this is why the V-Guide system is at the forefront of these solutions. There is no other technology that can match the performance. And perhaps this is the moment to consider your process and embrace automation to increase throughput, minimize downtime and ultimately save you money. We would of course be delighted to talk to you about your automation needs and show you how our market leading technologies can benefit you and your application. Thank you, Alec. Uh, I, I might be stating the obvious here, but COVID, COVID has changed the world for everyone. Um, we've changed, our shopping habits have changed, and that's no doubt exacerbated the, the demand for change in order picking in warehousing. And I think, I think that's shone through with, the, with your presentation there, Alex. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And also, I've got to extend thanks, special thanks to Irotech Robotics in Ireland, uh, who we've worked with um, and, and for sharing their content with us today. Uh, really great. Thank you, guys. OK, so um, let's take some questions. Um, do that. Be, be sure to get those, those questions in. Um, so first up, we have a question um, from Sebastian. Um, uh, I'll put this one across to you, David. Um, do you have limits on the length of linear actuators used in these type of applications? 
Well, yes and no. It, it depends on the type of the, the drive on the, on the linear actuator in question, which of course depends on, 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 on the type of application that you're looking for. For instance, a ball screw driven actuator will, will have a limitation to probably around about three meters, whereas something like linear motors are, are theoretically endless and you can literally go on forever with them given, given the, 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 the power availability of the linear motor. Uh, when it comes to driven modules, uh, our driven modules are typically in one piece available in six meters, but via good connection methods, we're, we're certainly able to go much longer than that. And we're no strangers to systems in excess of 100 meters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, next up, I'm going to go over to Guillermo. Uh, apologies for the pronunciation. Uh, he's asking if you please could you provide any information on dirty environments like metal powder solutions and how mm -hmm. to select products and, and lifetime expectations. It's a great question mm -hmm. and and really it's one where the HEPCO V guide absolutely excels. Um, check by all means check out our V guide presentation with which we've done in the past and it talks talk, talk all about the, the features and benefits of the self cleaning wiping action of a V guide so uh, I think I'm right in saying but basically any V guide solution that we offer is, is very good at, at working in, in harsh environments certainly uh, metal powders uh, no, no problem at all. Absolutely. This is one of those, tell us what your environment is. Tell us what your problems are. We've got 50 years of experience in this. Like Alex said, our, our V systems will generically take care of those, those, those harsh applications, but we're here to support you. And if you tell us what you're, what you're looking at, then, then we can give you the best advice. And uh, I'll finish off with a question um, from Cyril, uh, who's asking about the speed limit um with linear guide systems from hepco mm -hmm. well um yeah great question cyril uh, it, it's you know it's really all about the mass that you're moving but but you know if you want to talk about ultimate limits i mean we've done we've done belt driven systems that have, have approached speeds of 10 meters per second uh but you've got to remember it's not always about speed it's also about acceleration the ability to to, to accelerate up to a speed mm -hmm. hit your v max and then then slow down again absolutely right yeah um, okay, uh, I'll squeeze in one more quick question and then we'll move on to the next segment. Uh, David is asking, what about food and beverage applications where customers clean with detergents and water? David. Well, uh, in those solutions, we, the, the V system again does the job that, that Alec has already previously described. And of course, we have our corrosion resistant options, our stainless steel slides, where you can wipe and, and, and wash down, uh, we, we given given confirmation of, of the solution that you're washing down with and the format of washing down. This is why we excel in food and we excel in food packaging. So yeah, really our RV system and the stainless steel uh, options that apply to that V system are, are as much one, one type of product fits all as you can possibly get. Great, yeah, thanks, David. Okay, so uh, we're Good gonna question. move on. Um, yeah, thanks for your questions. Uh, we're gonna move on to, to the next segment. segment. Uh, which David is going to talk about um, why driven traction systems should be at the core of your machine design. Let's take a look. The process line is one of the great achievements in modern manufacturing. So, what is a process line? Simply put, it's a manufacturing system in which work in progress components move from station to station in a sequential fashion. At each workstation, new parts are added or assembled or processed or inspected, resulting in a finished product at the end. This expedites the entire manufacturing process because complex production routing and disconnected processes can be eliminated. Many modern process lines are less linear than their predecessors. Instead, work is routed dynamically around closed loop cells. This in itself makes DTS ideally suited as the core conveying system, the main artery if you like, moving product from station to station in an accurate and repeatable manner. So, what are the modern process lines required to achieve? First and obvious is reduced process costs. 
usually achieved with full automation and by fulfilling the complete requirement. In other words, producing a finished product and getting rid of those disconnected processes. Next is precision, often requiring high repeatable accuracy, but only where needed. Then there's our old friend high productivity, which comes through speed, high duty, perhaps 24 seven operation, low maintenance and less downtime. So why are HEPCO motion driven track systems so well suited? HEPCO motion DTS, DTS plus and DTS two are used on process lines worldwide, providing that controlled path for components through the entire process. From smartphone manufacture to food packaging to EV battery production, COVID-19 test kit assembly, and pretty much everything in between. Functionality and the ability to deliver on those key requirements are key. The DTS concept is reassuringly simple, but the attention to design detail and quality is also an important factor. Hepco Motion's PRT2 track system and carriages are of course the core element, providing all of the usual V-system key benefits. That's low friction and quiet running, low maintenance and no catastrophic failure. Self-cleaning, tolerant of those harsh process environments, high speed, high load capabilities, and last but not least, again, precision. Comprising of precision ground straight tracks and curved segments, any size and layout is there theoretically possible. Although systems are typically oval, rectangular, or square, even some bi-directional driven systems are feasible. This flexibility is of fundamental importance as size, configuration and number of carriages can be closely formatted to suit the requirement. Another advantage is the open centre of DTS, which can be utilised for process equipment, robots or anything else that fits. In fact, DTS is usually configured to give you the dimensions you need and make the best use of available space. Our driven track systems can also be used in any orientation, again, whether horizontal, vertical, or on their side. Some processes will require a continuous motion. Others will need intermittent motion, often with a high level of stopping accuracy, all of which can be accommodated by DTS. Okay, so let's focus on those high accuracy requirements. Each type of the HEPCO driven track system includes our locking carriage option which gives precise location of components while other option, uh, operations take place, aligning carriages to a repeatable position along any straight section of the circuit to within plus or minus 50 microns. The great advantage here is that each system can be configured to provide these high accuracies only where required. Your process might only need these in a single position or in a certain multiple positions. No problem, DTS can provide only where needed and keep the cost down. The vast majority of driven systems we supply use steel reinforced polymer timing belts. These DTS or DTS plus options are usually preferred simply because they tick all the boxes in terms of load, accuracy and speed requirements. The primary dif difference between the two is the attachment method between belt and carriage. DTS incorporates a trip latch mechanism which disengages movers if a certain drive force is exceeded, thus providing a safety feature in the event of a system jam up. Alternatively, DTS Plus uses high capacity clamping mechanisms which facilitate higher loads, speeds, centrifugal forces, and gravity on a vertical system. DTS Two, however, offers an alternative method of drive for those who need it. Movers are attached to each other as a train and driven directly by one or more scrolls. The advantage here is even higher speeds, which are also uniform around the complete system as the train connections are aligned on plan with the slide. Going back to the low maintenance element, we've explained on previous webinars that a dry V system will not catastrophically fail as our V bearings are internally lubricated for life. Only the track itself will become dry and our V bearings can easily handle this without a problem. However, a lubricated track will provide an exponentially longer time frame before any track wear occurs, even possibly removing track wear altogether. So we have lubrication options which include a more fit and forget solution if you need one. 
Our bleed lubrication option channels lubricant directly to the V faces of a straight slide section via specially machined pathways within the slide. The lubricant is then carried around the entire system by the V bearings and carriage felts, ensuring an even distribution along the track. All of our DTS options are assembled using our high strength aluminium construction system, MCS, and special purpose machined aluminium plates. High speeds equal high inertia, so these systems need to be sturdy and they need to be rigid. MCS extrusions also include T-slots for ease of assembly and integration with other machine components. Then of course we have our stainless steel track system and V-bearing options for those applications requiring corrosion resistance, maybe food, medical, pharmaceutical. Our DTS range of solutions provide various motion profiles in a continuous, synchronized fashion. However, some modern processes require even more, each mover performing its own complex motion sequence, essentially every mover doing its own thing. This of course is where our GFX and XTS collaboration with Beckhoff comes into play with unrivaled mechanical and system performance. This exciting product has been covered before. Correct specification to suit individual application requirements is obviously important. Our highly experienced technical team, alongside our team of technical sales engineers in the field, will guide and assist you through the complete process. Come and talk to us if you're interested or have any applications that might suit. Well, thank you very, very much, David. That was that was fascinating insight and, and really sort of illustrates, you know, how, you know, HEPCO is so important, not just in linear, but with circular type applications, you know, that continuous motion and the fact that you can have these stations all around the circuit um, and, and the fact that, you know, you can have tooling, et cetera, robotics position in, in the center of these track systems. It's key. It's key. It, they're they're a great, great um, solution in, in many instances for automation. Okay, so uh, thanks once again for your questions. So I can see them uh, flooding in. So th thank you very much, guys. Uh, let's, let's take a look at some of those. Um, okay, uh, so first question um, on track systems. Uh, Jürgen is asking about um, uh, what are the drive options for a track system? Um, I'll pick this one up, Jürgen. Yeah, good question. Uh, there, I mean, it depends whether you're talk, referring to the actual sort of mechanical drive that, that drives the, the independent carriages. Um, you know, it can either be sort of the scroll drive that we that we looked at for our DTS2. We've got belt drive solutions. Um, but equally, if you just take a track system on its own, you, you're very it's very flexible. You could have a chain drive there. You could have linear motors. Obviously, we work closely with with Beckhoff and their XTS technology. Um, so yeah, it's very flexible. In terms of actual drive solutions, motors, etc., we offer a standard AC geared motor, which will give you sort of basic indexing. Uh, you can combine that with a carriage locking system to give you um, you know high repeatability if necessary. Uh, or alternatively, if you've got a servo package or servo, servo solution, um, we can provide a custom input flange for you to simply bolt the motor on. Four, four bolts and a coupling and, and pretty much you're done. Mm. Okay, um, yeah, ne next question. Uh, we are, we'll go over to um, Ravi, um, who's asking, David, what are the physical limits of size and speed on a, on a track system? Well, Ravi, that's another good question and harder to answer. Um, to all intents and purposes, the, the physical size and the mass of the payload will dictate the, the maximum speed uh, and vice versa. So, so it's very difficult to say this is the maximum you can do and this is the maximum speed you can do. Um, this is why we have a, an extensive team of field sales engineers and our, and our tech guys back in the office to support and guide you through every individual application to make sure that we choose the right product and the right size of product for what you're doing. However, typically I would say that we've had good experiences with moving loads of up to 50 kilograms on our DTS plus systems 
um, and um, well in excess of two meters per second speeds. Again, it depends on the on the size of the curves around the track system because that will detect the the centrifugal forces. So there's a lot to look at. It's not easy to give you an answer, um, but that's why we're here to support you technically. Yeah. Thank you, David. Great, great explanation. Okay, uh, next next question. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do the best I can to answer this. Somebody's asking about delivery and, and how long it takes. I mean, it, it really depends on the complexity of your, your track systems, but, but typically one of those, those driven track systems, um, you know, it's, it's sort of six to eight week manufacture time. Um, so yeah, really uh, it depends on the application. Uh, we have a lot of standard solutions, which we can ob obviously deliver quicker, but the more bes bespoke solutions, um, you know, we, we obviously are working closely with you, the customer, to make sure we deliver the right solution for the right application. I think it's a good point, Alec. We're, we're, we're looking at a worldwide situation now with material shortages, sadly, and, uh, and manpower shortages. And even though they, they don't directly relate on what we're doing here, they can have an impact mm. and we're working against that. So what we need our customers or our potential customers to do is tell us what they need. Uh, and, and more often than that, we can, we can tailor what we're doing to, to, to fit that requirement. Yeah, great, thank you. Thank um, you yeah. One final question before we move on with the next segment. Um, can the track and bearings cope with ultrasonic welding taking place on movers? with nest fitted at 20, 20 kilohertz, 10 micron weld parameter, force of 1900 Newtons. Okay, so that, that's quite a tricky question. And, and I would have to sort of partly defer that across to our technical team. Um, certainly the force of 1900 Newtons, we've got um, solutions that will take care of that load, as you'll mm. see in our next segment when we, um, when we talk about sort of um, heavy solutions mm. um when it comes to the ultrasonic welding what we have to be careful of is that we don't actually sort of ultrasonic weld the bearings um so yeah it's a, it's a great question and um you know if you've got the application please send it through and our technical team will absolutely be able to help you with the answers can i come in on that one as well um, we we have had applications in the past for ladies underwear actually where um yes where where ultrasonic um, stations have been included in the process and no problem at all to the V system. But like Alex said, I think we'd need to, to qualify the frequency of the of the welding taking place and give you give you a, a, a proper answer to that. But also in terms of those sort of loads on process lines where we're looking at DTSs, for instance, um, there are other, uh, even though that load may not be, if it's directly down on the center of the carriage in a static position, then I would suggest no problem. But there's more of a problem when that load is offset and we have means of handling that via additional supporting devices that we can help you with. Yeah, yeah, great, thank you. Thank you. Um, right, so shall we, we'll move on. And like I say, keep the questions coming. Please we'll, do. We'll, we'll get through to, to all of them at the end. Uh, what will you be looking at next then, David? Well, next we're looking, or well, Alec is looking at heavy duty applications. Welcome to our busy factory environment, where today we're going to be looking at some of our solutions for higher load applications. And of course, automation has really evolved as technology has advanced. We're not only seeing the handling of individual components, it can be the whole process. So parts are built into sub-assemblies, and in turn, these sub-assemblies become a complete finished product, such as an entire car. Of course, Moving objects as heavy as this quickly, accurately and reliably brings its own set of challenges. And it's not just automotive applications where we have seen the need for some heavy lifting. Many industries, of course, face the same challenges for moving big, heavy objects around. For instance, we've supplied systems for palletizing, providing fast, efficient, safe handling and distribution. Also aerospace, with one example where we have been involved with massive jigs for installing landing gear into aircraft. And then you have your typical heavy industries, marine, oil and gas, each with often significant loads and some fairly hostile environments. 
So HEPCO is built on the success of its popular V-Guide principle to offer many choices when it comes to applications at the heavy end of the scale. And we've talked many times before about the intrinsic benefits that this technology brings. Low friction, self-cleaning, easy installation, no catastrophic failure, low maintenance and so on. The combination of high capacity, high precision and stainless steel options also makes it a suitable solution for specialist applications such as the remote handling of hazardous substances. However, sometimes you need compliance, particularly on large multi-axis insulation and HEPCO's clever designs have all of these situations covered. There are numerous options that we can offer that fall into the heavy duty category. So what are these solutions and which could you be using in your application? To kick things off, we have a couple of modular actuator options. The HDLS is a heavy duty belt driven linear actuator based around our heavy duty beam and guides. The unit offers a dynamic performance of a belt drive with a rated low capacity of up to 28 kilonewtons. Comes in three design configurations and is suitable for either high speed horizontal or vertical lift type applications. As an alternative, we have a ball screw driven actuator, the HDCS. This system is particularly suited to heavy applications with low speed, high accuracy, repeatability, or where a high driving force is required. Although length and speed is limited, it does make a particularly good Z axis thanks to the high efficiency ball screw drive. Our HDS2 range is at the core of many of our other heavy duty technologies. The component based solution gives you the ultimate freedom for your design. Double edged slides make for simple installation and a minimal carriage footprint, whereas single edge slides offer greater flexibility in low capacity and drive elements. For instance, spreading the rails further apart will greatly enhance the side MS load capacity. Or you may wish to install your belt or chain drive between the slides, or maybe simply take advantage of the integral rack option, which completely removes the fuss of a separate drive and the alignment challenges that can bring. Integral racks also offer a good balance between speed and driving force, and crucially are not constrained by length when compared to, say, belt, chain or screw drives. Slides can be mounted onto a range of standard aluminium construction beams that are designed to be self-supporting or alternatively backplate options are available for you to install on your own structure. Flat track slides and rollers provide a useful axial compliance, which is particularly helpful with slides running in parallel, such as the twin x-axis design behind me now. A range of bearings and carriages with low capacities up to 68 kilonewtons means that both heavy payloads and the secondary axes can be easily accommodated. And to take our HDS2 range one step further, we can also provide complete gantry solutions, such as the beautiful example we're with today. By combining all the elements of the HDS2 components, we create multi-axis systems with unlimited x-axis lengths, multiple y and x, Z axes as you need. We can take your heavy automation challenge and develop a bespoke solution to suit the exact needs of your application. All access connections, cable management, limit switches, support legs and tooling interfaces can be included in the design. But this isn't our limit when it comes to load. Weighing in as the heavyweight champion, we have our MHD range a product that has been designed with industrial robots and extreme payloads in mind. The roller and flat track design gives a rated capacity of 132 kilonewtons and by increasing the distance between bearings and, bearing and tracks, the low capacity can be increased. This is particularly useful when having to counter potentially high e-stop forces that a robot might generate. An integral spur or helical rack provides a simple drive solution and tracks can be butted to form unlimited lengths. This provides a cost-effective solution for a robot seventh axis and is highly efficient when compared against multiple ro robots servicing multiple stations. And finally, I have to mention our heavy-duty ring and track system. Our heavy-duty options, of course, aren't just limited to linear movements. Rotary motion 
is made possible by an extensive range of rings with internal or external Vs and available in standard diameters. Special ring diameters can be accommodated up to 1.8 meters. And beyond this, we can create segmented ring assemblies with a theoretically limitless diameter. HDRT rings can include integral gears for a simple drive method. The open center of the rings is particularly useful for many designs with tooling or process operations being packaged within this area. Some of our customers have even used a clever split ring design which allows the system to be mounted around tubes for inspection or welding type applications. Double-edged heavy-duty rings can be fitted with standard carriages and also be supplied as segmented sections for motion covering an arc. And these rings can also be combined with straight slide sections from our HDST range to form a, a continuous track that are well suited for the transportation of heavy components through a continuous production line. So all of these elements that we've looked at today give you so many options to solve your heavy motion and automation challenges. Be sure to check out our website where we have extensive case studies and videos alongside CAD models and catalogues. Finally, we have our team of expert engineers on hand to help you and recommend the best solution for your application. Alec, it's great to see the gantry system on our black implant working its magic in the background there, it really is. Um, the thing that, that hits me about heavy duty is there are specific industries that really do suit and, and, and two in mind are automotive and nuclear, where we do a lot, where stainless steel is required. And the good news about our, our heavy duty is it's available with those stainless steel options. And of course, with nuclear, you've got the situation where you could have a lot of uh, remote handling where, where humans just cannot get to, to where the process is happening. So you cannot afford a catastrophic failure. And again, this is where our V systems and the benefits of our V systems really do come into play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you for your your attention this morning, and thank you for, again for your questions. Let's pick some of those up. Um, so, first of all, um, Hans is asking, uh, what size robot can you use on your linear systems? Uh, well, Hans, um, that's a, a very good question. As we know, these industrial robots come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, um, but it's not so much about you know just the physical mass of the robot. Um, it, it's really about um, how fast that robot is moving and the, the reaction forces that it sends back through the through the you know the MHD guide system. Um, when you think about you know you, you we could easily put a say a ten ton industrial robot on, on one of our MHD systems, providing it wasn't moving. But say that robot is then then um, carrying around a couple of hundred kilos. Uh, and it's whizzing it around at, at several meters per second, and someone bangs the e-stop, the emergency stop, all of that mass suddenly comes to a jarring halt and transfers all the force through the system. So it's really those figures that we need to consider rather than just the basic payload that's, that's sat on the carriage. Absolutely, a lot of mass, a lot of inertia, a lot of momentum to have to deal with. And like you said, those go through the, the wheels themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. OK, um, next up, I'm going to go across to Andras. Um, uh, and he, he's saying, in our company, we switch from Rexroth linear guides rails. I assume that's ball rails to, to your heavy duty V guides. Um, the question that pops up at the end of the design process is uh, when we were preparing the designs, uh, is what is recommended tolerances for installation and therefore parallelism, um, flatness and vertical offsets, etc., of surfaces on, on the rails which they're mounted. Um, do you want to sort of start off with that one? I know well, what why not? We, we, we've talked many times about the, the added compliance, the advantage of the compliance within a, within a HEPCO V system compared to a, to a ball rail, where there, quite frankly, is, is very little or none. Um, in terms of, of what tolerances you require, essentially depend on uh, the, the format of design that you're going for. So for instance, on two V systems in parallel, I would suggest that you're looking for a compliance, shall we say, of 50 microns 0.1. Whereas if you, if you adopt a V system on one side and a track system, the track rollers on the other side, 
essentially you've, you've pretty much got as much com compliance as you need you know you can be talking about parallelism parallelism sorry if i can get the word out in terms of millimeters rather than sub millimeters so the the options within the hepco range within the heavy duty hds2 range are flexible enough to, to to give you the parallelism that you can achieve and what you're looking for yeah absolutely um you know david's hit the nail on the head there and i think you know the key thing is you know talk to us about your design um yeah. and, you know we can we can help you realize the best solution you know whether you need to be running a flat track in parallel um you know if you're running two v guides then then potentially you know it needs to be it needs to be fairly tight depending on your application um, but absolutely, we've got all sorts of compliance options which help you with installation, particularly on heavy duty. Um, OK, uh, next question. Um, uh, David is asking, can you provide a seventh axis robot that can follow a circular track system? Good question. David. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, well <laughs> funnily enough, uh, David, yes, we, we can. We're developing a solution now that will allow us to combine sort of curved track segments along with our existing uh, straight track segments on our, on our sort of MHD range, uh, which, which is well suited towards uh, the transportation of an industrial robot. Um, so yeah, you, we can we can join those segments together. We can include a, a, an integral gear, which gives you the drive solution. Uh, so for example, you could have an industrial robot that will follow a uh, sort of a oval or rectangle or L-shaped uh, track um, format around, say, a car. You know, if it was uh, an industrial autonomous car spraying application. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we are probably um getting towards the the end of the question i'm going to do for this segment please do keep them coming in all of these questions that, that are there we'll, we'll tackle at the end um so finally we're going to move across to david who's going to take us on a on a very sort of um current uh, and important um uh, subject of ev and the manufacturing techniques and and how we've been involved in that very crucial industry Let's take it away. We are currently witnessing a huge increase in the worldwide manufacture of electric vehicles. Hepco Motion continues to be a pivotal partner with automation experts who are working on various types of EV production lines in Asia, North America and Europe, not least EV battery and powertrain production. This is once more down to those fundamental benefits of the HEPCO Motion V system. The first positive to mention is the size and diversity of our product range. Our V system is available in many different product types, sizes and shapes, many of which are relevant here. Firstly, there's GFX with Beckhoff XTS for complex individual motion sequences. Then there's DTS, again closed loop oval or rectangular configurations where product needs to be sequentially moved between stations in a circuit, ideal for accumulative process lines. And then there's GV3 and SL2, our straight V slides suited to very long process lines and well suited to lane switching. More on that later. Supplied as component parts only or as driven modules, all of these are used extensively in EV and EV battery manufacture plants around the globe. System dimensions, format and shape can be uniquely configured together with various standard options to create that bespoke customer solution. We can specify accurately and cost effectively every time to meet each specific requirement. Okay, what are those specific requirements associated with EV battery manufacture and what makes the HEPCO V system the best choice? Firstly, let's look at the complexity of EV lines. Present day battery manufacture includes many diverse processes. So production lines are often long and complex, typically in excess of 50 to 100 meters line or circuit lengths. As battery technology further develops for increased distances between charge, cheaper and cleaner, the intricacy of lines is further likely to increase and this is exactly what we are currently seeing. 
no problem with the Hepco V system with its wide range of straight and curved V tracks, together with proven connection formats, which ensure smooth precision joints and open the door to endless theoretical system lengths. In addition, our V-slides do not require precision machine services for mounting due to the single contact point between V-wheel and V-track. This saves a considerable amount of time, effort and money, especially on those larger, longer, more intricate systems. You really do get the best of both worlds with a V-bearing carriage assembly. On one hand, they provide a rigid, zero-play, high-capacity solution for precise, controlled movement. On the other hand, the V-bearing has a built compliance under load that will tolerate a level of misalignment and is ideal when butting a large number of V-rails together or moving a piece of rail to align with another one as part of a production path. Plus, there's even greater compliance available with a V-system is used in parallel with our track rollers, another common component across many of our ranges. So what happens on a long line or closed track system if one or several carriages need to be swapped out? HEPCO motion adjustable type V bearings provide the valuable function of adjusting out system wear. But in addition, our double eccentric type will enable carriages to be removed and set in situ and without disturbing others, so reducing downtime. Individual battery cells come together in large quantities to form the overall battery pack, so manufactured numbers are much higher. This means EV battery plants need exceptionally high levels of productivity, typically 24-7 operation. High speed between processes is key. RV systems are not only durable for long life and high duty, but also well suited to those high speeds and velocity changes. Depending on certain factors, the HEPCO V-Guide system will accommodate speeds up to 10 meters per second. Recirculating linear technology such as ball rails and ball bushes are limited to a fraction of this because their bearings experience a high degree of acceleration, change between the load bearing track and the return track. This is fundamentally down to Newton's second law of motion, F equals MA. The combination of the high force and end cap material limits the rate at which the bearing block or bush can travel. On the other hand, our V bearing design maintains a uniform acceleration due to its circular design with the balls captivated and protected between highly durable hardened steel inner and outer raceways. Think again about driving your car around a sharp hairpin bend as opposed to a long sweeping bend. Think of the forces you experience in both of those scenarios. The HEPCO V-bearing will get that much gentler ride through the process. Plus provide a longer life and with zero maintenance. So productivity always wins. With the HEPCO V-system, re-lubrication intervals are extremely low. And of course, no catastrophic failure, even if the tracks are left to run dry. Maintenance and spares costs can be dramatically reduced. RV systems include double-edged and single-edged options, enabling larger mover plates and central drives where required. RV systems can be used in any orientation, and as might well be expected, EV battery manufacture will usually require a good level of corrosion resistance from its main highway. But that's okay, because we have stainless steel V-track and V-bearing systems in our SL2 range, and for this type of eventuality, in addition, we also have V-bearings in vacuum, high temperature and low temperature formats. The level of design versatility is key. So let's get back to lane switching. The product flow path on an EV line often needs to be complex, including track switching, offline workstations, buffering zones and the like. This is a job for Hepco Motion V system with its proven record in track management systems, moving part of the track to align with another, pretty much more like a, a railway point, but again used, used vertically or horizontally. In this situation, it's often necessary to leave a small gap between rails on the switching sections. No problem again, the V-wheels on the carriage can be configured to suit 
and carriages with six bearings will easily traverse a larger gap and at high speed. Again, system compliance is key. Lane switching also allows a closed loop system to be built vertically, making effective use of factory space. In addition, this enables the product, whatever it may be, to maintain, maintain the same orientation around the full system. Please remember that, again, in collaboration with our Beckhoff partners, XTS GFX now has the TMS track management option. So, I'm hoping that this brief insight will help you, our viewer, into understanding how we can help you, regardless of your industry or type of application. We're always on hand to assist your design so process, so please, come and talk to us. Well, thank you very much, David. That was uh, incredibly interesting, and, and it's such a, uh, a current subject. I mean, we all know that before very long, we're all going to be driving around in, in electric vehicles. It's, it's inevitable. Or flying around. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, quicker journey to work. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, you know, when we look at the, the technology that, that we've applied to, to the manufacturing of, of this very cutting edge uh, industry, uh, you know, our systems really suit it so well. You know, it, it, we're talking about, you know, throughput productivity. Uh, and the, the, the fact that we do long, fast and dirty is, is very important to, the, to this type of manufacturing process, it isn't it, David? Yeah, absolutely right. Um, anyway, so thank you very much. Keep those questions coming in. And um, first up, David, um, we're going to go to uh, Kim Lee. Uh, I'll, I'll pick up this question, actually. How do you see technology keeping pace with the rapidly increasing demands for EVs? Mm. Or see, our technology keeping pace? Okay, yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, we've got to keep up with the demands of this industry, and, it, and it's going to be a virtually exponential growth of, of, of these products. Um, you know, not only for, you know, driving cars, but there's going to be buses, lorries, all sorts of infrastructure on the road is going to have to be supported. Um, we have a product which is incredibly flexible. Um, it suits itself well to a wide array of applications. Um, your, your options for drive are incredibly varied. So, you know, whether it's a belt, it's a chain using one of our integral racks or, or significantly linear motors as yeah. well. It, you know, and, it, and it's particularly good at, like I say, these long runs um, which, which we often find in, in this type of, of manufacturing process. Um, so, yeah, abso absolutely. Anything to add to that, David? The only thing I, I'd add to that, Alex, is we, as a company, continue to innovate, and we can be proud of, of how we innovate to, to shape ourselves to, to modern and new industry requirements. So, so with that in mind, whatever is required out there, we shape ourselves to, to fit that requirement. And, and added to the fact that our systems are so reliable, reliability is key. Um, so, so, yeah. Yeah, we're on the right track. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. OK, uh, next up, um, I, I'm going to dodge this one. I'm going to put it across to you, David. So uh, here we go. Oh um, Julian asks, um, with your involvement in EV manufacture, do you see this technology evolving further? If so, how? Ooh, Julian, oh, to be a visionary. <laughs> um, undoubtedly technology will evolve. Uh, that doesn't just relate to EV, it, it relates to, to every type of manufacturing that's out there, of course. But I think uh, EV or, uh, manufacture will, will evolve, or specifically batteries will evolve for two fundamental reasons. The, fir the first reason is improved efficiency. We do not wish to be recharging our vehicles every 200 kilometers. We want we want to be doing that at least as infrequently as we do with our existing internal combustion engines. And cost, of course, comes into efficiency as well. And the other thing is green. I think we're, we're all now on um, a, a reversible path towards a greener future. We all get it. And I think modern industry gets it. And so we're looking for greener battery solutions and, and perhaps lithium or lithium ion batteries are not the end goal, but they're certainly an improvement on, on what we're looking at at the moment. In the future, we might be looking at sodium batteries, hydrogen batteries. So the times, 
they are a changing and, and I think we're all on a very exciting ride. Yeah, I've, I've got the order in for my flying car. So, yeah, <laughs> bring it on. Uh, right. Thank you very much. Um, right. OK, so if you've got any final questions now, now is the time to get them in. Um, just going to tackle a few of the questions that came in during during the presentations, which we haven't got to yet. Um, first one uh, from from Ari. And he's asking, um, have you used Duralloy coating to get resistance against humidity and detergents? Uh, well, Ari, it's, it's a great question. Uh, and as we've, we've sort of highly featured throughout this presentation, we have a lot of stainless steel options which give you that corrosion resistance. Um, but there are options as well, which we, we've applied to some of our other linear systems that don't have the stainless options. You've, you've got sort of the TDC coating um and such like which uh, generally we default to stainless steel because it gives us the best uh, corrosion resistance in many sorts of harsh environments it's a good point alec well frankly speaking some customers take our rails in a standard carbon format and apply their own coating so it's an entirely flexible situation it depends on the corrosion resistance that you're looking for like Alex says, stainless will normally do that, but there are other options that can apply as well. Yeah, thank you, Ari. Okay, uh, next question uh, is, is a question from, from Tegan. And um, I've, I've kept this one for, for the end because it's sort of quite a, quite a, a, a large and, and general question about HEPCO and, and our manufacturing. And you're asking about us to, uh, you know, how we, we're going to, you know, reduce our outsourcing work. Now, uh, when it comes to HEPCO, we, we are very proud to say that, that most of the manufacture goes on here. Okay, We've, this is our main uh, factory and headquarters, and we also have our own bearing plants. We're very, very self-sufficient. Mm. Um, and we continue uh, to, to be that way. We want to, to, to continue sort of increasing our capacity uh, and we will grow the business so we can stay in control of those elements as much as possible. It's quite a probing question, that. Yeah, thank but, you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, um, a question from Barry going back to, to the DTS um, uh, segment. And David, I'll, I'll throw this one over to you. Is it possible to get um, customer specific carriages on a DTS system? Yes, it is. The, the only thing that's important for the, the carriages on a DTS are, is essentially the, the coupling piece, the the piece that connects the the belt or interacts with the scroll with the with the carriage and the geometry of the rollers are important as well the geometry has to be set to to fit the geometry of the of the curved segments of the track but beyond that there is a certain amount of flexibility in the way that we we provide the the actual plate uh, for the mounting of the payload yeah absolutely i mean if it, you know and that's the beauty with us being a manufacturer you know, if, if you're looking for just some some additional holes, you know, dowel holes mm -hmm. for fixing your tooling, we can easily put those in. Or if you're you're looking for an increased carriage size, um, because width, you've, you've yeah. got a, a you know a relatively large uh, product or, or tooling that you're putting across, um, then we can also accommodate that as well. I think the, the good thing about DTS and some of the DTS plus um, options is that the, the the carriage face is the highest point on the system. So we can supply a standard carriage and, and customers can apply their own larger plate to the, to the top of our, our moving plate, our mover, without fear of, of any system collision. That's great. OK, well, it, it looks like we've uh, drawn to a natural conclusion now. So thank you all very much for your questions. You. Um, just to let you know that this, this will be available on YouTube uh, and our website. Uh, so please do check that out. And we will we'll also make the individual presentations available separately. So you can, by all means, share those with your customers. Um, you know, get our faces out there. We're, we're not shy. Um, and, you know, finally, thank you so much for joining us today. We really do hope to see you again. Keep an eye on our social media, um, website, etc., because we've got lots, lots of exciting stuff in the mix. Uh, so it's goodbye from me. And... And it's goodbye from me. Thank you again. Thank you.